Matt Izzo, Sal Volpe. Fantastic. Thank you so much for helping me out with that. Welcome, guys. Jordan. We're so happy to have you here. Happy to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. So uh, what inspired you to come up with this concept that, for the musical? Well, we've, we've wanted to, uh, we've been friends since high school and we've wanted, a, a pipe dream of ours was to make a musical. And eventually we're like, all right, we just got to do this thing. We're, what's it going to be about? So we basically decided to write what you know. There's just so much material around us on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. uh, we really wanted to make something that, you know, obviously there's a lot of comedy here. There are a lot of stories that make you think. But also there's a lot to celebrate. And so we want to take everything that we love about the island, everything that kind of annoyed us, and just <laughs> make, like a positive, make it a, you know, a positive spin on it yeah. so that we're celebrating it. Even, even the things that frustrate us, we can make it a metaphor for something that means something deeper. And that's where we find the comedy. Right. I, I mean, love it. it started with a, a note on one of our friend's cars and we kind of just knew, okay, this is, uh, this is the show we're gonna, show we're gonna make. When you're looking around, you see some patterns here. Um, <laughs> is the windshield note uh, when you park in someone's spot? Uh -huh. you, don't to you don't have to be in front of the fire hydrant. If you're in the spot, you will get the note. And so we have, that's the first song we wrote was "You're in My Spot." <laughs> story. Yeah. Um, the friend who got the note is now directing our show, and uh, the song is our most popular. It's the phrase is on T-shirts. And we really, that's what I mean. We put the positive spin on something yeah. that frustrated us. And now just, you know, multiply that by a two hour show. What I love so much is that you have the concept, you had this idea and you actually made it happen. Cause so many of us, I grew up doing musical theater and I, I actually worked off Broadway with somebody from Staten Island um, who put a show together because of his love for Staten Island as well. And I can tell you, you know, we all have these big dreams and these ideas and, but actually doing something and executing oh, it is so huge. And, and the process is so intricate and people come and they see a show, they see it on stage, they see it in its final, you know, the, the, the result if you will mm -hmm. but the process is so different than what so many people actually understand so can you tell us a little bit about that process especially getting ready for that very first show yeah so um it all started last year um two years ago yeah. we're in 2023 yeah. you know yeah. it's not just it's not just writing the wrong number on, on a sheet of paper it's not really <laughs> Yeah, so we're in, so in uh, 2021, um, we had started on our draft. Um, we were working on it remotely, uh, and we were just doing a little like workshop read. Um, and then a bunch of people were like, "Are you actually going to put it on?" And so we uh, tried to figure out uh, during a pandemic how many uh, how many places can you perform? Uh, and the answer is very few. Uh, but we ended up actually performing. Um, in the uh, outside of the National Lighthouse Museum next to the ferry terminal at St. George. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's this big, beautiful open plaza. They do a lot of different events there. Um, uh, we had seen Broadway in the boroughs there. So we know that you can fit a big crowd, you can put sound and all that stuff. Um, and we jumped on Kickstarter yeah. and mm -hmm. we got as many people as we could to try to donate. And then we ended up having over 500 people come out. Wow. Sold out, sold out an outdoor show. In wow. The with no rain during the performances. <gasps> during, That's incredible. Of rain, uh, just before one yeah. of the shows that we were very terrified. Yeah. Um, but it, like you said, there's a, there's a lot that goes on and especially, you know, we had a million and one headaches with just that first <laughs> run. Um, but then we were like, okay, well, how do we maintain this momentum? Um, mm -hmm. And we looked into a bunch of different places and one of them um, was the play location we were before here in December, which is the Tank, which is an off-off Broadway theater in, in Midtown Manhattan, mm -hmm. just a little bit from Madison Square Garden, um, and we had just, you know, kept yeah. trying to figure out who's going to be involved in our show and who can come and support us. We had a bunch of people from Manhattan come, and now we yeah, are right. yeah. So, and a big part of that, as we took the show out of Saturn, was how to make sure the content is still relatable to people. Yeah. Exactly. who either don't have the best perception of Staten Island or <laughs> so yeah. our our philosophy yeah. is coming up with the satin version a uh, satin island version of everything yeah. um okay. because people no matter where you're from we've had people from all over the city all over the country some different countries yeah we have people from Australia who've come to see the show who yeah. thoroughly enjoyed it and yeah. understood it and we just you know we're very specific sometimes with you know Staten Island issues and and comedy sure. characters but people say, hey, I, I have a version of that in my hometown. I, you know, I know that like we have, this is what goes on where I'm from. 
Um, so in that way, we keep it uh, relatable, but also, you know, teaching people what, what it's all about. And it's, it's not just what you see on TV. It's not just all the things that make you roll your eyes. It's, you know, it's a little bit deeper than that. Um, and again, the central conflict is, especially for people who grow up on Staten Island, do you stay forever? Do you leave? Mm. Uh, people are very passionate about that answer. Mm. Uh, all our characters are. <laughs> and uh, we explore that. I, I think the answer isn't the answer that most of them, if they leave, they come back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. yeah. I mean, <laughs> we, I mean, yeah. I mean, a lot of them move to Jersey. Yeah. So yep, yep. They'll come out and see the show and in that way they can come back. I love this. I, I'm so glad you're doing this. Listen, we need comedy in our lives. We oh, need yeah. music in our th that. And I think that's probably why it did take off so instantly during mm -hmm. that time period, because I think we were all as just a, as a society, I think we were craving that collective enjoyment that we get from the theater experience, right? With music and oh. laughter, and especially like you said, something that's relatable, but also kind of a glimpse into the Staten Island world that people that are not from Staten Island get to see and appreciate. And so what what reception from the audiences have you been hearing about? What it, what have people been saying? What has it been like? Well, um, uh, the one of the, our best comments is, it's better than I expected. <laughs> always good, always good. Uh, wow. We that in a nutshell. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. It, it's, it's better than I expected. There's, there is more than just the mall and maybe if you're if you're aware uh smug harbor right like there there are four things yeah, to do on I mean, staten island people and laugh people cry i mean like we said long new jerseyans who are just like what and then like people like i said australia um europe like we've had a bunch of like out of town and out of country people yeah. come to the, see the show and just thoroughly enjoy it um resonate with a lot of the story Mm -hmm. um you know and, and in the center of that picture that's on the screen right now is as our lovable narrator uh the ghost of groundhog chuck ah! um, <laughs> you're kidding fortunately uh dropped in 2014. Yes! um yeah, back, right back to help us out and but it, it's a lot of this Funny. wow like there's actually something i can resonate with i have friends who've already t talked about their their own um their own spin-off plots revolving around yeah. Chuck and the logic of our world. So like, there's a lot of people who are um, deeply invested in not just the comedy, but also the message of our show. Um, because it the really, it really is about us being, you know, we talk about Staten Island a mm -hmm. lot as being the forgotten borough, but this is mm -hmm. a show that makes the forgotten borough remembered. Oh, um, like you know, like really acknowledging what makes us who we are and what makes us so relatable to everyone else. Oh, that's such a good, that's such I, a great thing to do. And I love that, Staten Island Chuck, God rest his soul. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm dying to come and see it. Where I can know. people like me and others find out how to get their tickets? Well, we're going to be uh, here at the Avenel Performing Arts Center in Woodbridge, New Jersey. It's 10 minutes from the Outer Bridge. We're here this weekend, Friday through Sunday. We have four shows. You can okay. get tickets on uh, brownpapertickets.com if you search for Staten Island Musical. You can go to our website, which is thisisit.com. And it's uh, T H I S I Z Z I T uh, dot com, and you can also find us on social media at Staten Island the Musical. Yeah, we're on everything. So, oh, oh great, we'll, we'll find you. I we think we'll, our viewers are excited about this. I'm sure. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I'm so glad we've done this interview with you guys. Are so much fun. If you're if you're half as fun, you know, in the theater, then I think we're gonna have a very good time. Oh yeah, for <laughs> sure of it. Thank you. Thanks for having us.